That very powerful clip was brought together by the Hamas Rape Me Too movement. And Avishag Naab Noam is the initiator and a project manager for that movement. She joins us now from Ashkelon in southern Israel. Thanks so much for joining us, Avishag. Thank you for having me. Let's talk a little bit about this I, I, um, horrible, horrible situation that occurred on October the 7th when, when Hamas came in and, uh, and the kibbutzes at the, at the, uh, the rave um, and attacked women systematically. This wasn't just a one situation event. This was from what the New York Times even put out today. There were at least seven locations where women were attacked. It sounds as though what many people don't understand is just how systematic the, the rape of women occurred and how it was all directed by Hamas. Absolutely. Um, I think that um, all the reports that are coming right now, they're coming in a very uh, big late, you can call it that way, because um, the IDF, about a month and a half ago, they published the glossary they, they were found near Raim. Uh, kibbutz, which shows um, evidence for the instructions of Hamas uh, terrorists how to commit uh, these atrocities, this sexual assault on women, on girls, and even boys and men. Um, so the evidence were already out there, um, if it's by the documentations of Hamas themselves, um, uh, the glossary that was found uh, near Raim, and, um, and the confessions of many of the terrorists that were interrogated. Um, shortly after uh, October 7th. So all the publications that we are seeing right now are very, very uh, needed um, because of the uh, global and vast denial of what happened. Uh, but still, it's too late. It's too little and it's too late. Um, you know, the, the uh, damage has already been done. Many doubt of what happened. Many um, uh, say that we took the time in order to invent those uh, evidence, so-called. Um, they were out there already uh, on the first weeks uh, after the October 7th, and nobody cared. Nobody did anything about it. No no women's rights organizations, um, none of them, um, uh, human rights organizations, even children's rights organizations, which our organization which are uh, initiative uh, research. We researched, um, we monitored the social assets of uh, 50 organizations, 50 organizations uh, for two months. And uh, maybe a few really um, acknowledge the atrocities and later on they published the uh, sexual assault that were committed and they condemned it uh, but very few the vast majority uh, were silent they justified it uh, some of them like women for women the international um, uh, international organization they tr until now they're trying to balance between what happened to Israeli women um, to what happened for instance for um, Palestinian uh, female terrorists who are um, held um, in Israel? Right, so prisons. let's talk about this, Abishak, so, for one second, if I if I may. Yeah. So let's let's let's. Uh, I'll make it very simple. All right. If the women weren't Jewish, we wouldn't have be talking about this, right? So this is really what it boils down to. The boils down to the fact that a lot of these women rights groups. The moment that they're Israeli women, it's like I don't. I, we don't want to get involved in it. But if the tables were turned. And if it was Muslim women, Boko Haram, for instance, if it was Christian women, as many of them are, you would see it would be the United Nations coming in in helicopters to try to figure out what happened here. Absolutely. And I will even make it even stronger, what you're just saying, um, that it's not uh, only Jewish people, only Jewish women. Look at what happened in Nigeria uh, this Christmas. Uh, around 200 people were massacred during Christmas mass. You didn't see any reports on it on the international media. And the only reports you've seen, um, they justified it by climate change. Climate change. So there is a systematic, um, uh, uh, a systematic um, um, ideology that I don't know what is the motive of it, but they're trying to cover on Islamic extremist groups like Boko Haram, like Hamas. Um, uh, as long as it doesn't happen to Muslim women, there is no news. You don't have to talk about it. It's okay to be silent. It's justified. Um, this is insane, and I think uh, uh, we are heading to a very chaotic and very uh, misleading uh, world 
uh, because people are brainwashed and they're not getting the news as they should get. They're not getting their facts. They're not even bothered to fact check themselves. Right. And they are driven by but by, by insane ideology that really I don't have any other words to uh, let, me, let me give you a prime it. example if I can have shocked so today the New York Times posted that article about the extensive investigation they had 150 people that they that they interviewed uh, that showed the systematic uh, sexual assault of women in, in October 7th and then if you look at the postings and comment section if you go online and you see the Twitter or X uh, comments to some people mentioning this article all you hear is well what about the what about what about Israel's bombing Gaza? What about and you get the what aboutism as opposed to the why aren't people just understanding if a woman is assaulted, sexually assaulted, believe her. Don't worry about uh, what it's what other it's as if it happened to your own daughter or your own sister. So where is where's the disconnect, especially in America? I don't understand where that disconnect happens. And maybe you can enlighten me or enlighten uh, our audience. Is it is it? because they're Jewish? Is it because they're Israeli? Or is that disconnect because no one believes anything anyone says, no matter where you're from? I think um, anti-Semitism within the feminist community, uh, it's not something that is new. Uh, you can read a lot about it. Um, uh, it you know, the, the politics of identities is everything is, oh, any identity is okay uh, until it gets to the Jews. Once it, once you are Jewish and feminist, then uh -uh, something is not working. Uh, it's contradict each other. And you can read a lot about uh, a lot about the history of uh, Jewish feminists and within working within the feminist communities around the world. They are subjected to a lot of pressure, a lot of hate, um, a lot of uh, dehumanization. Um, and it's all under the justification of uh, you uh, a Zionist or you are Jewish and you belong to the state of Israel, you have connections here and there. So they all the time connect it to the nationality of Israel, uh, which they don't know anything about. They are brainwashed about that as well. So um, it's the source of it, the origin of it comes from deep lack of knowledge and brainwashing of the, unfortunately, the, the, the yeah, news, because, um, because news I, outlets that doesn't, that fail to provide their job uh, to, to report anytime something is happening in Israel, to report about the full picture, um, see both sides and not just covering one side without um, understanding the other. Um, so this lead eventually to a one-sided story, one narrative that is being spread all over the world. And people are believing, they really believe. Some of them are driven from hate and deep anti-Semitism, but some are really naive and they really believe what they're seeing and what they're hearing on the news. Um, that Israel is the aggressor, that we are the colonizers. So they automatically, everything that's happened to, to Israelis or Jewish around the world, they justify it. it it's justified. Avishag Avinoam, I just wanted to take this time to thank you so much for joining us. Avishag Avinoam, she's the in initiator and the project manager for Hamas Rate Me Too movement. Yes, she's joining us live. From, I just want to add one we sentence. How much, it's really important. Very quickly, got very five important. seconds. Yes, you can go onto the website hamasratemetoo.com and go to the wall on shame and click on the logos and send a generated email to the 50 organizations and universities that we've been researching, researching on. It's really, really important.